we'll go through those. So take a look right now and see what happens here. This one is changing amplitude. This one is changing frequency. Yeah. All right, so what part? So did you start with the regular cosine graph? So how do you start with the Oh, I feel warm. Oh, 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 I'm saying, what is that noise? Okay. <laughs> All right. So now, cosine is the x or the y value. Amanda, cosine is the x or the y. So start like this. One, go, go through all the x values. Take all these x values. One, zero, negative one, zero, one. This is your cycle. But you had to get three. Okay, so the basic one, the basic curve is going like this. Here's the red one. The basic one is in red. One, zero, negative one. Oops, maybe the basic one is not in red. Sorry. The basic one is in blue. Okay, the basic one is in blue. One, zero, negative one. Yeah, I just see the green one. I just, I got the blue, I didn't get the right green one. Okay. So you got the basic one. Now, let's hit this one. Your frequency is B. That's two. What does that mean to you? It means what? So what is the frequency? Look up your definition of frequency. What does it mean, Brown? My definition of frequency is the higher the frequency, the more it Okay, but I gave you the definition of frequency. Well, look it up. And tell me what exactly what I said frequency is. When you do your homework, you have your notes there. Yeah, I thought it was really right. Lane. Tell me the Very good. Thank you. So frequency says frequency says how many complete cycles in two pi? <laughs> So start right, start with the B first. So hit the B first and say, how many cycles am I going to get now in 2 pi? Mm -hmm. So now say, how many cycles am I going to get in 360 degrees? 2, right? So if I get 2 in 360, how long does it take to complete one of those? 180. So that's where your formula comes in. 2 pi over B. 2 pi, and you have to know the formula. This is for period, over B. Isn't that the same as 180? Yeah. So why do they have 1 divided by 2 pi is 2 pi over 1? Yeah. Oh, don't don't look it up. Don't look it up. Okay. Don't look it up. 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 Don't Say it in degrees, you're going to get two of these in 360, and it works the same when you use your period formula. Know this formula. So now, I say to myself, okay, cut this in half. These are my four quadrants sticking out here. Cut it in half. I need to complete one full cycle. How many quadrants do I have to go through to complete a full cycle? Four. So I need to make four equal tick marks on this. So I say, I'm here, divide it in half, and divide these in half. If I took 90 and divided it in half, how big is that? 45. Makes sense, right? Pi over 2, divide that in half, I get pi over 4. Think degrees if you have to. And start your cycle. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. There's one complete cycle. And do it again. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. There's your second cycle. You've got to have two of these complete curves. And you have got to go around that circle two times. Now, if you don't know that period, and you go to put this in your calculator, I'm going to put in my cosine curve first. Remember I said zoom trick to get this out here. Zoom trick. Change this to degrees if you need to. And it's probably much easier for you to look at in degrees right now. 
painted into green. Okay, here's your coastline curve. What? That light went out? Oh. So, change it to degrees. Keep it in degrees if it helps you. Remember that it doesn't exactly, your, your table doesn't exactly go to a grid table. You have to change this. This is what's key to this. If you don't change your table, there's no way you're going to be able to get it from your graph, from your calculator to your paper. So here's the key. How do I change this table for a regular cosine curve? I'm going to start at zero. What is my delta? What is my change of table for a regular cosine curve? 90. How come? Quadrant. And that's where my zeros and my ones are, right? Very good. So I'm going to change this to say 90. So now when I look at it, doesn't everything show here? Um, what did I do? I put the star. Sorry. I didn't move it down. So when I go here, doesn't all my zeros and my ones show? Can I graph this now? Now, I'm going to change this. I'm going to put a 2 in here. I can graph this. All right, so now I graphed it. Do I get two curves? I get two curves. So now I have to get this to my paper. I go to my table. Oops, I'm on one. How do I get my zeros in there now? How do I get the rest of this? 45, but how did you know that? It's, it's half. So you took the period, and what did we do to the period? We divided it by what? Four. Well, how many quadrants do we have to go through? Guys, if you can't remember this, whether you do this or you do your calculator, you're not going to be able to see it. Write this step down. Find the period. Okay, wait. Find the frequency. Write these steps down. Find the frequency. B is your frequency. This tells you how many complete cycles in 2 pi. Okay, second step, find the period. The period is 2 pi over b. If you need to, say it, 3, 360 over b. That's how long to complete one cycle. How long to complete one cycle. Okay, third step. Take your period, I'm going to write it over here, and divide it by 4. These are where your quadrants go. These are your zeros and ones. And if you don't change it on your calculator to be your delta table, you're not going to see it. So my period here was pi, or 180. I left my calculator in degrees. So all I have to do is say 180 divided by 4. So come back to your table set. Delta table is 180 divided by 4, every 45 degrees. Now can I see all my ones and my zeros? Yeah, otherwise, otherwise whether you use your calculator or whether you use the graph, if you don't go through those steps, you're not going to find your quadrant. Okay, did you write down those three steps? Yeah. Keep them handy. you got to follow it. Hmm? Zeros and ones. When you go through, remember when we unraveled your cosine curve? And we said, I'm on a unit circle. I don't have a lot of space to write, sorry. I'm on a unit circle. Let's just go through the cosine. So all in between here was the 30 and the 60 and the 45. They're all in between here. So like my, say my 45 is 1 over radical 2. That comes out to be 0 0.707. My, my cosine of 30 is 0 0.866 or whatever they happen to be, 0 0.8 radical 3 over 2. They're all between 0 and 1, right? Because 1 is my radius, is my highest, or my hypotenuse when I drop a triangle. It's my radius. 1 can only be the height. So everything else has a decimal in it. So when we, when we unravel your curve, I don't really care about all these little points in here. 
all I care about is my, my main points, the points that are going to help me outline my graphs, if you will. Like the highest, the lowest, and the zeros. So that I don't, I get all the other ones in between, but they don't, they're not so important when I need to sketch. If I really needed to map them all out, yeah, I could figure out each little one. And remember how we did it the first day? I showed you where they fit in. All you really need are your major points, and your major points are your the high, the low, and the zeros, which turns out to be our quadrants because we're on a unit circle. So from there, that's where we graph. Now, take this guy. So let's walk through and see if this process makes sense. What is base? 0.5. I'm just going to say one half if that's okay. So that means I need half, let's follow the rule, half of my cycle in 2 pi. So how long is it going to take me if half of my cycle goes in 2 pi? How much more do I need to get a full cycle? Another 2 pi. So my period should be 4 pi. So let me see if that works. 2 pi over b, which is 1 half, says keep change flip. Yeah, isn't that 4 pi? Let me put these in degrees. 360 over 1 half. Keep change flip, 360 times 2 over 1, ah, 4 pi, isn't that 720 degrees, or 360 and 360? So my period says you need to have 4 pi to get a complete cycle. I only had you graph between 0 and 2 pi. So I say, okay, if my period is 4 pi, let's follow the third step. Take your period, 4 pi, and divide it by 4. What do I get? Pi. Every 180 gets a tick mark. So what color did they use? Green. So they started like this. Zero, uh, 1. Then they went down to 180. 0. Then they went down to 2 pi. 360. Negative 1. If I had another one, I'd come back up to 0. Back up to, two, to 1. But I only gave you just the 360 to graph. So is this half of your curve in 360? Yeah. Now if you put this in your calculator, let's put this in our calculator. I want this to say one half. So I graph it and I get one half. I'm only looking at this part right now. This, this gives you the other part of your curve so it kind of makes you see the whole curve in 4 pi, right? Here's my complete curve in 4 pi. I want just this. But when I go to my table and I go to graph this, well, I have it in I have it in 45. Say I just left it in from 0 to 90. Say it went from 0 to 90. I can still see it. I just have a few extra points in here. Because all I care about are these guys. At the 0, at the 180, at the 360, at the 540, and if I go down, at the 720. These are just extra points in there that fill in my curve. That's all they do. To sketch, you just need your highest, your lowest, your zeros. All the time. Okay? Does that make sense? Keep this handy. These are the steps you have to follow. I know, I know this is a difficult concept. Okay? These guys. What does this cause me to do? Where are my transformations going to be? Shift where? Up and down. I have vertical shifts. This causes me to take my sine curve and shift it up and down. Did I change my frequency? No. Did I change my amplitude? No. I like this, this sheet because they concentrate on one change at a time. They changed your amplitude, they changed your frequency, they're doing a vertical shift, then they're going to combine everything together. But at least you had a chance to try each one of them by itself. So my regular sine curve is my sine curve plus 1. So my regular sine curve says 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. At four quadrants, 90, 180, 270, 360, 0. Now, all I have to do for my vertical shift is do this, plus 1. 
this becomes 1, 2, 1, 0, 1. These are the points I'm going to follow. Use your same quadrants, just add 1 to everybody. So which one did they do? I'm assuming it's the blue, right? Yeah, there's a one half there. So the blue said one, then they went to two, then they went back to one, then they went to zero, then they went to one. Here's my resting line right here. Because my resting line should have been right here at the zero, right? Didn't it move up one? My resting line moved up one. So I started here, went up, went down, down, up. They call it a midline. I don't know what you guys called it last year. And I don't know what the math instruction calls it. Um, <clears throat> it's either called a midline or a resting line. They called it midline. I guess I'm old school. I called it resting line. So here is your mid your midline. A and it works the same as your asymptote did. Remember whenever we had an asymptote in your logs and we said we're going to make a vertical change? Take your asymptote and add one to it. We made the horizontal one, we took it and added and subtracted. Do the same thing with your midline. If I come here, I'm in the red here, and they minus one, start with again, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. This is your basic sign. Subtract one from everybody. Negative one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative one. So they did. Negative one, zero. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 1. There's your curve. Here's your midline, right here. My midline dropped 1. Does it still look like a sine curve? Sometimes it helps if you kind of actually like just to put a little dotted line for your midline. This guy with the green, they just went up 1 half. So we took your points again. 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and we added a half to everybody. A half. 1 and a half. A half. Negative a half. And a half. And then they went through and did the same thing. A half. 1 and a half. A half. Negative. Oops, I must have missed a 0 in here. Negative a half. Oops. Sorry, I'm down here. Where am I? Down here. Sorry, I'm back up to, to there. Okay, so follow the points and draw your graph. If you did this in your calculator, this one's not so bad because you didn't change your frequency. You didn't change anything. So all you have to do for this guy is just go with your basic sine curve. Start with your basic sine curve. Get comfortable with that one first. Put your mode again in degrees. Do a zoom trig. And just get your basic sine curve first. If you want, darken this curve and then do the second one as your changes. You'll see your transformations a little bit better. Okay. So in other words, if you go here and you just darken this, this will be your parent curve, your core graph. When you come down here, then just do this one and just say sine x plus 1. I really like you to graph without the calculator. Here's your basic curve. Here's your curve coming up. If you like to, you can even change your midline on this because your midline is a horizontal line. It was at y equals 0, now it's at y equals 1. If it helps you, throw that in there. Put y equals 1 in there. There's your midline. See it? Play with your calculator. See if it, if it makes sense to you. You didn't change the frequency. You didn't change the amplitude on this. It's the next part where they're combining everything. You ready for this part? Questions up to now. Give me questions up to now. That's what we're doing. Without following those steps, it's going to be very difficult whether you use your graph or the calculator. So let's take apart the first one. Let's see what color they did their first one in. So it's got to be blue. Okay. So this is my A sine BX. What is A? 
amplitude. What is our new amplitude? 0.5. What does that mean? You come up 0.5 instead of 1. Every Everything that we'll do, and let's start like this. We do, this is a, a cosine curve. 1, 0, 1, oops, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Multiply everything by 1 half. Let's start like this. 1 half, 0, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half. These are the numbers we're going to use. So it's only instead of going from zero from negative one to positive one, it's only going from negative half to positive half. We change the range. Agree? Okay. This guy. What does the three represent? My frequency. What does that tell me? How many complete cycles in 360? So let's think this in degrees per second. If I do three in 360. How many degrees does it take to complete one? One. One. Twenty. One twenty. It takes 120 degrees to complete one. I have three sets of 120 and 360, right? So it's going to go blip, blip, blip. Now, i got to figure out where are my zeros and my ones. How many quadrants do I walk through? Four. So I take my period and I divide it by four. So every 30 degrees, I should be passing through one of these dots. Make sense? So I take my, they, they did it, 90, 180, 270, 360. So I'm going to say 90 degrees has three sets of 30s, right? Three sets of 30s in here. I don't know. I'm just kind of off on this. So go every 30 degrees. Just try to take that line and separate it into 30 degrees. I think I'm really off. It's hard when you're up here to not stand in the way and figure it out. Okay, so now all we have to do is walk through that. One half, zero, negative one half, zero. Do it again. One half, zero, negative one half, Zero. There's my second. One half. Oops, of one half. Then I got to start it again. One half. Zero. Negative one half. Zero. One half. So do I have three? One. Two. Three. Yeah. yeah. Now, take your period and pi. Your period was two pi over three. This is still 120 degrees. If I take my B and I divide it by 4, I have to do this. I have to say T means flip. 2 pi over 12 reduces to what? Pi over 6. Pi over 6 is how many degrees? 30. So if you need to keep it in radians, you can keep it in radians. When you put it in your calc, it's just much, much easier to go into degrees because everything is translated into a decimal with radians. And then you kind of have to just keep track of where you're going. So let's put this in your calculator. Stop me if you're not seeing what I'm doing. Let's put this in your calc. Okay, five. Cosine 3x. Just zoom thread when you start. I'm going to make my window go from 0 to 360. Just because it's, it'll match this. Let me just make my window be the same as yours. Now, I, I want to see this on my table. I can see the point fives, I can see the zeros, and I can't see, I can see my negative point fives. But if I try to graph this, I'm missing a couple in between, aren't I? No. Maybe? No. Uh, 
which should be separation sent to your table. 30. Let me see it. There it goes. Now you have them all. Okay. But if you don't divide that by four, your period, you're not going to see it on your calculator either. So make sure you follow those three steps. Find your base. Find out how many complete curves. Figure out how long it takes to hit one. Figure out where each quadrant is. Every third. So you figured out there were three, right? You figured out there were three cycles that we had to complete? Where's the list? Look at the list I gave you. Let's follow the first step. What's the first step say? Find B. So B says, how many complete cycles am I going to get? Three. I got to fit three in 360. I didn't change my my window right here. I still am going from zero to 360. I got to fit three of them now. So how long does it take to complete one of them? Read the second part. 360 divided by B. So 360 divided by 3 tells me what? Think of it logically. No, no, I want to, I, I, I hate memorizing things, but think of it logically. If, if I have to go 360 degrees and I need three of these things in here, equally equal, three equal things, wouldn't you divide 360 divided by 3 to see how much each can come back? Right? You, you have three people. There's three of you here. You have $360 to share between three people. How would you do that? You divide it by three. So we have 360 degrees to share with three curves. So I'm going to take my 360 degrees and divide it by three. And say, how much does each curve get to use? So each curve gets to use 120 degrees. Now my problem is, out of 120 degrees, if I look at my, if I look at my graph, out of 120 degrees, there's my 90, my 180, my 360. 120 is right past the 90, isn't it? Because this is 90. So 120 is right past here. How am I going to get my curve to look like a cosine curve in that in that 120 degrees? So I, I write my pattern up here. I just write my pattern as we went around your four quadrants, right? So I have to pass through four quadrants. These are the exact same. This is where I come back to it. So technically, you're going through four quadrants. You just come back to that part. So now, if I have to pass through four quadrants in 120 degrees, how much does each quadrant have to be? You have $120 to share for four people. Divide by four. So if I take 120 and I divide it by four, I say every 30. So I take this and I say 30. So if this little tick mark is to 90, how many 30s fit in 90? Well, how am I going to separate this? How am I going to separate this if I do this and I say this is 100? If this went from 0 to 100, how would I separate it by 30s? 30, 60, 90. And then I'd be a little bit over here, 30, 60, 90. And I'd have to go here to 120, right? You just separated it by 30. Just make, if it helps you, make four tick marks. You got to divide this in half and divide those in half again. But where does that come out? Every 30 degrees. So if I give you something that goes from 0 to 90, how would you put tick marks from 0 to 90 if you have to go every 30? Just take one quadrant right now. From 0 to 90, how would you put your tick marks? You have to be every 30 degrees. Okay. 30. 60, 90. Each one is going to have two tick marks in between them, right? So the next group has to have the same pattern. Two tick marks in between, two tick marks in between, two tick marks in between. Now you got all your tick marks. So now just follow. One half, zero, negative one half, zero. One half, there's one curve. Then do it again. One half, zero, negative one half, zero, one half. There's your other curve. And then do it the last time. You gotta have those quadrants. If you don't have those quadrants, you can't graph them. You can say, yeah, I need to fit three of them in 360. They have to be every 120. 
It's not as easy as when we took the 180, divided it in half, divided those in half. They fell exactly on those quadrants. They were nice. 45 is very nice. 30, 60s are worse. 60s are much worse to graph than 30s. Because if I have to separate into 60s, that means my 90s, I'm like a two of these. I have to do two of those tick marks. Two of those tick marks. Still separate into 30 then. It's, it's how you have to separate your, your line. That shouldn't be as much of a problem as the rest of this. Getting better? Wait, I'll take advantage and I'll take that. I think that like, I keep going now and I get like four curves. You can only go from 120. So, in, this is a bad graph here. Every 30, every, there are 90 degree tick marks. Amanda, there are 90 degree tick marks, right? On your paper, at every 90, just separate that into two little tick marks in between. And then also do this. Put a, put a darker line on your 90s and 180s and 270s. And then try it. Start at your starting point. Let me see if I can do this. I can't move this. Yes. The period? The y two. I didn't do Y2. I'm only still on Y1. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? The period should be 4 pi. They write their periods a little different than I do. Yeah, their, their period should be, um, their frequency is 1 half. That, I don't know how they write these. Their period should be 4 pi. I'm mm going -hmm, wrong. I just didn't get there yet. You're ahead of me. Okay. All right, you know what? I'm going to come right over to you in a second. Let me get to the second part, and I'm going to come over to you in a second. Um, let's get to the two part. Here's the sine curve. They kind of mixed up these things. Sine goes like this. What's my amplitude? Two. So what do I do with all of these points? Multiply by 2. 0, 2, 0, negative 2, 0. This is what I'm using. Why do I need to know those? Because those are my high, my lows, and my zeros, right? I need to know where my graph is going to be. What is 0.5? What does that mean to me? Half of my curve in... 2 pi, or 360 degrees. So how long, think of it logically, if I do half of my sine curve, it's, a sine curve is nicer because it's like one hump, one hump. So half of my sine curve should look like a mound in 260, right? In 360, right? And another 360 or another 2 pi to complete my curve. Yeah, they're off. Here, so you're going to do 2 pi divided by 1 half. They fell into the trap. Don't divide this. Keep change flip this. This is 4 pi. This should say 4 pi. I don't know how they get their frequencies. Don't look at their frequencies. So now, I need 4 pi to make one period. How many quadrants do I go through for one period? 4. So I'm going to take my period and divide it by 4. So every pi should be one of my tick marks. So I start at the zero, they're in red. I start at the zero, at pi, I go to the two, at two pi, I go to the zero. Doesn't that look like a half of a sine curve in 360? Mm -hmm. My other half of my sine curve goes like this, comes back up. You guys have to practice this a little bit more. Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's hit the last one. When did we get out here? I just forgot. 54. 54? Okay. Alright. Alright, let me just get through this last one. So I'm on a cosine curve. What does this tell me? Amplitude. So my curve, cosine curve says 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Multiply everybody by 2.
okay? So far, so good. But I got this little thing sticking out here. What's my frequency, by the way? Two. Frequency is one. Good. What does this little plus one mean? Vertical shift. So these are the points. Add one to everybody. Do it right here. Add one. So this becomes a three. This becomes a one. If I add one to negative two, what do I get? Negative one. Add one. Add one. This is what I have to follow. That's it. And I'm still 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So I say 3. At the 90, I'm a 1. At the 180, I'm a negative 1. At the 270, I'm a 1. And at the 360, I'm a 3. Thank God that frequency was 1. Okay. All right. I know this is difficult.